The Unshackled Waves, episode 131. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. As most followers of this podcast will be aware, I had been heavily promoting the first ever Church and State Summit hosted by our friend Dave Pello. It had occurred over in Brisbane at the weekend. As our Unshackled Editors meeting was in Melbourne on the same weekend, we unfortunately couldn't attend. However, I'm sure many of you would be eager to hear about how it went, so who better to hear from than the man himself and to find out if the summit met his expectations and what feedback he received. Dave, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Tim. Good to be back. And now, uh, first question, how are you feeling uh, a week after the summit? Are you feeling uh, more relaxed, a feeling of accomplishment? Yeah, look, it was, um, it was a rewarding activity to, to do. Um, I was very tired before the summit, and uh, Friday night, I actually felt a little bit flat, um, but I think it was just the, the stress of organising everything. And uh, come Saturday, it was so enjoyable. It was it was really really great, and there was just a wonderful positive energy in in the room. And no matter people's backgrounds, I mean, there were non christ It was a specifically Christian summit, but there were lots of non Christians there, and everybody got more than they expected, or so most of the feedback was anyway. It was uh, it was it's been great, and the feedbacks kept coming. And I sent a little survey out, or you know, to everybody that bought a ticket. And um, more than half of the people who came so far have responded to that, and um, at least 95% of them are very positive about the experience that they had, um, and that in itself is is rewarding and, and energizing uh, for all the effort that was uh, put in to make it happen. Yes, that would definitely definitely be a satisfying feeling to have. Now, uh, I thought I'd give you an opportunity to first uh, explain the the purpose of the summit. Yeah, thanks. Look, uh, I'm a Christian. I go to church every week. It doesn't make me a Christian, um, but it's a bit like being a, you know part of a football club. You you get better the more often you go. It's um, you know yeah, it's about being part of a community and learning from people who are I guess more mature than you and helping people who are still developing in their faith. Something I noticed in my community of faith was that there was a lot of people who wanted to pray about. Uh, political situations in our nation, genuinely concerned uh, for the love of our neighbours, but they were either unaware or unwilling to be practically involved in the in the solution. And um, and so the purpose of the Church and State Summit was really to bring people off the sidelines and into active participation in our democracy. It's 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 the whole point. Uh, we don't want to be told what to do by a big and distant government. We want government to be accountable to us. And just like trade unionists and environmentalists, um, people with a religious worldview and, and informed convictions um, have every right and responsibility to be involved in, in shaping the, the future of the nation. Contrary to, to popular hate theists, um, it's not... A dictatorship of these values it's just our vote counts like everybody else's our political organization is as as credible and necessary as everybody else's and because we've been on the sidelines for so long there's a very large constituency that actually isn't being represented um, adequately and so it was to encourage everybody hey guys if you love your neighbor like Jesus taught us to in the parable of the Good Samaritan, it does not look like the scribe and the Pharisee walking past the need, crossing to the other side of the road on their way to be religious. It looks like the guy from a neighboring you know, region who was probably despised actually getting involved, practically investing his time, his money, his effort, and, and taking a long-term interest in the welfare of people he'd never even met before. And so that's, I think, how Christians should express love for their neighbours with the political tools that are available to us in an inclusive, pluralistic, liberal democracy like Australia. 
And uh, you had a stellar lineup for the the summit. You had uh, Margaret Court. Obviously, she's a. Uh, she uh, was actually a late scratching. She had to apologise. She was unable to travel. Oh, uh, that's but a, everybody that, else was there. That, that, that's a shame. Um, it was. But, yeah, but you also yeah. had uh, former Deputy Prime Minister uh, John Anderson. You had uh, Jim Wallace, uh, Chairman of the the Christian Lobby, and their new yep. uh, Executive uh, Director Martin Illis, and also you had uh, Martin Isles. Yep. Yep. Uh, I knew I'd mess, mess, that, I'd mess that up pronouncing it. It's it spelt funny. <laughs> and also you had an international uh, speaker, Brendan Malone from uh, New Zealand, who I've heard uh, speak previously. He's uh, uh, very uh, talented. Um, so yes. obviously it's uh, no no easy feat to to, to get uh, such a, a lineup. Uh, so it was certainly good for your first conference. You're able to you know, have them yeah. as uh, draw cards and uh, promoted in your materials. Yeah. Look, it. Um, I I I did feel very blessed and literally um, graced by God to be able to pull this together. It's it's not something that I should have been able to do looking at my resume, um, but not only was I think God's hand of blessing on it, but there's there is a an energy uh, amongst the Christian community in Australia that. Um, we have neglected our responsibility to love our neighbours with political opportunities afforded us for generations and certainly for the last decade. And uh, there's no blame to go around, but we take responsibility here and now. And what can we do to be part of the solution to make Australia's future better? Again, it's not about dictating values. Um, it's really, really well articulated. The spirit that everybody met with and, and you know, I guess collaborated with for for the future is really well articulated by a quote from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who four or five or six generations ago said that the church must not be the church must be reminded that it's neither the master nor the servant of the state, but the conscience of the state. Uh, we're we're not to be the tool, but the guide and the critic of the state, um, and that's just just about shining our light. You know, light isn't just a decoration, it's actually to illuminate, to reveal, and to, to guide. Um, and that's, you know, at the user's discretion, whether they want to walk in the light or stumble around in the darkness. And again, there's no preaching about it. You don't have to believe in God to want to avoid stumbling. Um, you just have to value your toe. <laughs> but um, if we can highlight some of the obstacles there, then it's kind of just like a lifeguard on the beach putting out the flags, do or don't swim between the flags, but, but here's where it's going to go best for you most often. Um, so that's, that's the kind of spirit by which we want to, to help Australia. It, it's not an uh, overbearing um, autocratic thing at all. It's just democratic. And you are also lucky to have quite a number of uh, partners uh, uh, for the summit, which uh, always helps with uh, promotion and getting different groups together. Yeah, look, uh, one thing I didn't want to do with the church and state summit was make it the Dave Pellow show. Um, that that wasn't the point. The point is is to facilitate and encourage people to get involved in the culture war. And to that end, I wanted to actually promote all of the resources or as many of the resources as I could accommodate, um, which are available. Um, so the different alt media personalities and um, lobby groups and not-for-profit organizations and, and ministries that are involved in teaching Christians and informing them and representing them and resourcing them to, to be active and informed in, in their own right. And so it was actually like, you know, a rising tide carries all boats. Let's, let's help the delegates, the people who attend the summit to, you know, maybe they've heard of some, but probably not all of these organizations. Um, so we showed little video clips promoting them as ad breaks throughout the summit, which helps um, keep the attention span by breaking up, uh, you know, the amount of speakers that are there. We had, you know, I think a dozen or 15 exhibitors in tables around the morning tea and afternoon tea catering on, on Saturday. So you know, they were in the middle of where everybody was, which is where the food is. Um, everybody got to put something in a show bag on everybody's seat. So... 
the the effort was to really make it a summit, not not just an information session, but actually provide the practical tools and and resources to to see. Look, here's what's already available and and on the front line in this culture war um, in our community. So why not uh, use those resources and even think about supporting those organisations because uh, there's not a, no profit in um, in community activism on the, essentially on the right side of politics unless you're funded by Soros on the left side there's no money in politics you've you've got to look after those resources that are, are providing resources and and quality ones probably deserve the better support uh, now, it's one thing for to get people to air their uh, frustrations and views on the internet, but it's another thing to you know get them off the computer and get them to a summit such as this and uh, mm. you know, get them energised into uh, taking action. So uh, what was the, the final attendance and you know was it something that you were satisfied with? Look, it was probably just the right amount. I, I was hoping to sell out the auditorium, the venue, which was about 500 people. Um, it was very ambitious for a, a first conference, but I've got no problem with, you know, shooting for the stars and ending up with, with something in between there. Um, we had about 150 people um, turn up and probably another, well, so far 30 to 40 um, people have bought video tickets um, so that they can watch the entire eight hours of, of information um, at their own pace and, and over and over again. Um, why that was probably a good number was because it was the first one. There were some things that didn't work exactly well logistically, um, but at 150, they pretty much went unnoticed and they would have been magnified and, and actually become a problem if there was, you know, three or 400 people there. And uh, what were the, the type of uh, people that attended? You uh, mentioned uh, earlier that it was not just you know, uh, people from churches and religious. There were people there who just generally wanted to you know, uh, extend their horizons. Yeah, look, I, I didn't meet everybody there. Um, I wish I could have, but I was aware of you know, a, a, a small percentage of people that didn't fit the target demographic um, of, you, you know, you, your church going folks. Um, there was one person there who doesn't necessarily have a personal faith in God uh, as an example um, and she you know is into all kinds of you know exam examining all of her options um, Buddhism and different philosophies and religions and worldviews not at all um, beholden or, or committed to any one worldview and uh, some of the feedback from her was that Brendan Malone from New Zealand made excellent logical and scientific points about the the sanctity of life from the moment of conception and and how bad abortion is on ethical and logical grounds it's just it's just a nightmare for for any society um, and so that was a really great feedback from somebody who doesn't necessarily subscribe to the the scriptural worldview of why abortion is wrong but still the facts of the case uh, are compelling um, and and then we had um, you know, people from, I, I guess you'd, you'd call sexually diverse backgrounds. Um, you know, we had a, a transgender woman there. And the greatest encouragement to me was that she felt welcome um, and not judged or condemned or harassed, even though there was absolutely no doubt at all. It was mentioned very many times from the stage that um, transgenderism is, is a bad, bad teaching um, for, for the good of society. Normalising gender dysphoria is not helpful to people who are suffering from it um, or, 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 you know, possibly indisposed to it. And, and you know, that, that fact was able to be communicated without um, causing offence was, was a credit to her as well because, um, you know, it takes somebody to choose to not be offended, to consider facts objectively. doesn't mean you have to agree, um, but it does mean we can have a healthy discussion when the the credit for concern is, is the starting point. And so if we just have these debates, even if they get heated and passionate, if we credit each other with trying to do good, there's no reason to get offended and reduce the efficiency of, of the ensuing argument. We can debate about it and make ideas the, the the focus instead of identities. 
Uh, now, a lot of the uh, sessions and topics uh, were quite uh, uh, broad. So uh, one of the main themes was obviously the, the culture war, which encompasses uh, the left's uh, agenda uh, more, uh, more broadly. Uh, mm -hmm. And But you also focused on... and, and, and I think I think a lot of the focus on these issues has been lost in the the, the past year. You mentioned before uh, abortion and and euthanasia. I mean these are mm. uh, you know, issues which have like they're they're still you know very um, uh, very important issues to to yeah. campaign on. So I thought yeah. it was good that uh, that was refocused. Yeah, look, we've just seen um, the socialist state of Victoria under comrade Daniel Andrews uh, introduce Australia's first um, euthanasia laws. We actually did have them before in the Northern Territory, and Australia was the first nation in the world to reverse these draconian barbaric laws. And, um, you know, it's a very relevant topic because other states will have their Marxist leftists trying to implement um, this, you know, horrible devaluation of, of human life, trying to change the role of doctors from caregivers who do no harm to um, killers for hire. Um, these are absolutely critical issues to keep at the forefront. And it's important that, um, that everybody, but Christians in particular, just because that's the, the focus of this summit, um, are able to have a conversation that deals with the facts instead of the theology because the facts support the theology. And we can, we can separate those two things, or, or rather, we, instead of from working from God back to um, good policy, we can work from facts, evidence, and science, good ethics and, and good arguments to arrive at, at truth. And, uh, and that's the way Christians need to be having these conversations. If, we, if, if I say to you, you know, you should do X, Y, Z because of Leviticus, if you don't care what the Bible says, I'm not going to be very effective in persuading you. But if you care about truth and facts, then we're able to have a conversation on the same page with the same language and, and the same goal, which is truth. What's, what's best? What's justice for a society? And those two goals, if, if that's your objective and that's my objective, then we can have a, a conversation with a, a mutually desired outcome. What's best? What's um, what's truth? What's justice? What's the best way to have a peaceful Australia? Um, so yeah, these issues are very important. They need to be kept in focus because you know um, in Queensland and and around this around Australia and around the world, there is a growing dissatisfaction with the rate at which we're killing living human beings in abortion clinics, and um, you know at the same time there's this growing pressure from the left to make it easier and more common for parents to kill their babies. And that's terrible. We need to, again, have good common sense answers. You know, I've, I've seen videos of where you, you, a, um, an interviewer goes up to somebody and says, are you pro-life or pro-choice? And the usually young person, university student says, oh, I'm pro-choice, you know, and maybe spouts a little bit of propaganda about why, you know, woman's body, woman's choice. Great, great. Watch this video. This is what an abortion procedure is. And a qualified doctor who's actually performed over a thousand abortions before coming to a, a better informed position actually talks through and illustrated, not, not, um, not documented, but illustrated uh, representation of what an abortion procedure is. And time after time after time, after watching a three-minute video without any moralizing, at the end of the video, the interviewer says, okay, now are you pro-life or pro-choice? And they go, well, man, man, that's, that's murder. You, you can't, that's wrong. I'm, I'm definitely changing. I'm pro-life now. And that's what we've got to be able to do. We've got to be able to have a simple conversation without moralizing or condemning people. But at the same time, wrong is wrong. If slavery is wrong, if we can identify theft and adultery is wrong, we've got to be able to apply the same easy conversation to everything else and say, let's talk about it because we want truth, peace and justice for our society and for every individual in it, not just what affects us, but what affects other people. And again, if we try and bring theology into it, even if theology supports it, sometimes it muddies the water for people who don't care. 
And so if we just stick to the facts, the evidence, the data, the logic, we're going to bring a lot more people with us to, to agree on what is just, true and peaceful for um, the good of Australia's future. Yes, I definitely uh, agree with uh, that's the correct strategy for these life issues. And I've seen so many mm. people learn, learn, you know, what abortion actually entails. They, wow, you know, I didn't realise it was, you know, that, that gruesome. And I think, I think the biggest uh, challenge for us on these issues is that uh, the law... The laws uh, that that we have in Australia make it increasingly, you know, difficult to actually get that message out there. And so right. we've we've got to basically, um, you know, make sure we can have those conversations uh, yeah. while we while we still can. Um, now, some uh, activists may have been feeling a bit burnt out uh, from last year. Obviously, the the marriage vote uh, uh, didn't go uh, your way, and a, a lot of uh, the people uh, at that summit. So, but what was the the feeling uh, in the in the room? Did, uh, uh, was there f still a sense of you know optimism that you know we you know uh, you know, maybe not on marriage issues, but, you know, these other, you know, uh, cultural uh, issues we can make an impact on? You know what, it's a great question because uh, a lot of the feedback was um, last year was exhausting. Last year was, um, you know, it, it can be tempting to look at the defeat um, and lose sight of the war, you know, the defeat and the battle and lose sight of the war. Um, but a lot of the feedback was that it was a great way to start the year. They actually felt a spark um, to to ignite their energy for, for the year and to, you know, be encouraged to keep going and roll our sleeves up and not rest because the left are never, re never going to rest. The incessant march of Marxism through our institutions will never take a day off. And they've been at it for decades. And so, you know... Yeah, we're a absolutely concerned of the many wolves that are at the door. And um, the right thing to do is to raise the alarm. And the right thing to do is to fortify our position and say, no, you're not coming any further. We're not going to let you continue to devalue marriage and family and life and freedom and liberty. These things are sacred and they're not granted by governments. Um, there is a higher authority and the governments are accountable, even if only to the people. But, you know, there are these natural laws, these natural freedoms that must be defended. And, yeah, I, I, it's, it's fair to say that most people um, overwhelmingly reported they had this great energy as a result. They certainly um, received more than they expected um, from the summit and, and left with a, a great buoyance to to um, continue on. I, I think as much as it was bad for Australia in, uh, in a traditional biblical sense to, and many people who you know don't have a personal faith also agreed that undefining marriage wasn't the right thing to do for Australia. Um, for example, Paul Murray realizes, hey, we were right. It was not about one thing. It was about the march of Marxism and just another wedge to, to separate um, the fabric of society. Um, as, as much as that was the case, it, it was a bad thing. Um, it's actually been good because it's provoked so many Christians who were sleeping to wake up and to wake up the church and say, okay, we're, we're not just going to stick to the pews on Sundays anymore. We care about society and we're going to shine our light, put it on a lampstand so that it may give light to all who are in the house like Jesus said. So yeah, it was, it has, it is working together for good. And the left are definitely going to uh, push further on, uh, you know, LGBT issues. And, you know, we've, we've probably seen that in, uh, you know, the lead up to the Mardi Gras, which is this weekend, just, right. you know, so much more, you know, insane uh, mm. social re-engineering. And you know, I, mm. think, I think it's important to, you know, still make a stand saying, you know, Australians, they do, you know, not write a you know blank check for, for for all of this stuff it was you know mo most uh, people who you know voted yes it was on the question and so you know we can you know we can still say no to of you know even further of what the, what the left's going for absolutely that's right you know they they in the the people campaigning for yes um, insisted all through the campaign that it was just on that question alone well fair enough uh, we'd never believed you, 
um, and we still don't. But by your own own words now, be hung. Um, it is only about that question. There, there are no implicit other messages in there by by their own declaration. So how dare they suggest now that that anything else should happen as a as a consequence of that yes vote? They have no right because they guaranteed us and stringently assured us over and over and over again from the prime minister down, both both major party leaders assured us that it was only on the question of undefining marriage. Um, and there were no other implicit, um, you know, approvals from, from the Australian people in answering that question. Um, we didn't believe them. We knew they would take it further and a lot further, and they are. So we have to remind them of their words. No, you said there was nothing else implied in that um, vote, in that survey. And, and so you have no right to now appeal to that survey as an authority to do anything else. And uh, obviously with the, the summit, you had a, a call to action at, at, at the end. And um, uh, from uh, what you said, there was a lot of people who were you know, energized uh, by the weekend. Uh, so uh, so how, do you, how did you, you know, make sure that people take that enthusiasm further? Do, uh, do you, uh, did you put forward any like, goals people should have <laughs> and um, how to, you know, so when you come to, or well, I hope that you're going to have a, a summit again next year, you can, um, sure. you know, get together and say okay we've you know achieved this we've you know put this into to place so sort of you you're not you know coming back every year you know in the in the same space yeah exactly look the the last session i designed to be very very i wanted the whole session to the whole summit to be practical not just a, a hot air fest um more information I didn't want that we wanted and, and there was good feedback that we achieved that goal that there were lots of practical applicable um uh strategies Excuse me. So in the last session, we actually had a debate, very unlike a Christian conference, um, where we had three different strategies and points of view. Some of them um, polar opposites, uh, and some of them complementary. So they were. Um, we had Bernard Gaynor advocating that everybody should become an activist. Then we had Curly Smith ac advocating that everybody should join a minor party. And then we had David Goodwin, who's um, currently serving his second suspension from the LNP here in Queensland, advocating that everybody should join a major party. Um, now, obviously, you can't do all of those, but you could, you know, join a party and become an activist, um, or, or various levels thereof. And and so that was great because there was some contradiction there. There was not necessarily a hundred percent agreement, um, but you know, the different views got to be able to be articulated and and. After that session, we had a Q and A where people from the audience could challenge and question uh, the the things that had been said about you know major parties, minor parties, and and activism. The the right of politics in Australia is sorely missing a a lobby group as organised, a secular lobby group as organised as Get Up is for the left, um, and and so really what the conclusion was. If there was agreement on, and there was agreement on, on, on something, it was this, do something. Join a minor party, great, do it. If you think major parties are the way to go, then do it and be involved. Don't just give them your 80 bucks a year and, you know, say I'm part of a tribe. Attend the meetings, attend the pre-selections, most importantly, and make sure that the best people for the job uh, are being pre-selected. So rather than getting to election day when you're one in a hundred thousand people and you're choosing between dumb and dumber, why don't you go along to the pre-selection when you're only one of 50 people or maybe a hundred people and you get to choose between three or four hopefully quality candidates and you, you know, quite often a quality candidate, quality conservative will actually miss out on pre-selection just by two or three votes. And so all of these people who are unhappy and now activated can join whichever party they want and help tilt the balance back towards the centre because we have gone so far to the point now being left of Mao. It's, it's ridiculous, even in the right-wing parties, that some of the candidates we're throwing up, they're in favour of abortion and in favour of euthanasia and in favour of undefining marriage. And we're like, hang on, are you in the right party? these candidates should not be pre-selected. And the simple way to make sure that happens is for everybody to get involved wherever they are, even if it's in the Greens, like whatever. Just get involved and start having your say at the more 
cellular level where you, you get to have a, a better return on your investment. One vote in 50 is much better, or even 100, is much better than, it's a, it's a thousand times better than the chances you've got of a good um, influence in, in a general election. So yeah, those branch pre-selections. A lot of people, a lot of people at the summit didn't know how easy it was to be a part of a party and help pre-select better people for the job, people more like them. And um, and so that was a good outcome. That was an actionable thing that a lot of people uh, will will be taking up on, as well as you know looking to see how far can we advance each issue um, this year. Undoubtedly, the Bly, sorry, not the Bly, the uh, Palaszczuk government in Queensland will be floating euthanasia um, before the end of their current term. We have to resist those, see them coming, and um, and you know fortify the door against the wolf that's that's trying to come into our society. Yeah, I think that's definitely an important message to have because uh, you know it's going to be different for each person. You know what they feel is the mm. best fit for them, and you know you put out these you know different options. You had the three speakers advocating different things, and then the person can go away. So okay, I've been you know given these different you know tools that I can use to 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 shape the future. Which one's the best for me? Yeah, that's right, and and it was important to also not say that I'm right, you're wrong. Um, it was the message that I was trying to craft with the summit was this is the allied forces. We're all fighting against an axis of evil and we're on the same side. Even if we're not fighting on the same front um, in the same battle, we're all on the same side. And if somebody is following Jesus, um, then we have to allow them the, the liberty to follow him differently to how we do. Um, otherwise, they're just following us. And, and that's not a good thing at all. It has to be freedom is. It has to be freedom. Um, and, and, and so that, that was another conclusion. It's like, well, which leader do we follow? Because sometimes there's different interpretations in different denominations. And the answer is don't follow a denomination. Don't follow a person. If you're a Christian, you're a follower of Jesus. That's what you have to do. Um, and if you're not a Christian, you can just call it being true to yourself, you know, examine your heart and follow your conscience and wherever you are best fit or best represented, go there and make it better. And now while I've uh, got you here, I thought um, <coughs> it'd be worth asking you, obviously you're continuing on with your um, alt media uh, venture. Um, yep. Uh, Palau talk is uh, still still going strong. You p uh, post regularly uh, a couple of times a week. Yeah, Palo Talk is um, going on nice, nice and strong. I've actually got a few episodes. I've just been so busy with the summit, I haven't even edited everything I've recorded. Um, so there's three or four interviews um, yet to edit and publish. So they they should all be up within a week, um, as well as working on the editing of all the videos from from the summit, um, and then trying to make a little bit of money in my spare time as well, whatever's whatever's left. But yeah, Pello Talk is going well. We're doing a fundraiser at the moment to try and get a um, a video camera, which is worth about three grand plus some extra equipment, just so that we can properly cover some live events. So the March for Life is coming up. There's an abortion summit in um, Brisbane Parliament House at the end of March. I want to be able to go along and cover those things with a, a volunteer cameraman and interview people, um, people who are on our side, people who are on the other side, and and just examine, you know, what's your view? What do you think? You know, that man on the street kind of interview and maybe have a little bit of debate if they're not too uh, antifa. Yeah, that's definitely the, the next level for, well, both of us to, you know, do yeah. field reports uh, 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 from the streets of our uh, native cities. Obviously, I'm in Melbourne, you're in uh, Brisbane. Uh, and I'll fly down and I'll be your cameraman. <laughs> Oh, it's oh, we're we're doing. Uh, oh, thanks. You've for got offer. much more colourful protests than we do in Brisbane. Yes, oh, well, the, the the left of well, they, it's their home down here in here in Melbourne. But that's definitely uh, what um, you know. Both our audiences are craving because you know yeah. on the six o'clock news, like they'll cover these major events, but you know you get thirty seconds, and you know most of the time it'll be you know a warped uh, view of uh, of what happened. That's and right. I think it's. Uh, 
what we've been doing is, you know, putting all of the footage up in in full so, you know, people can view it and, and make up their own minds. And I think that's what, you know, people really appreciate. Thank you. I, you know, finally get to, you know, view, you know, what uh, really happened. Yeah. I think people also love watching the debates, um, you know, the live street debates where you're just rocking up to some uni student and and you're hearing their views, you're hearing them articulate and sometimes they can articulate it well and frequently um, they're regurgitating rhetoric that they don't actually believe in and haven't properly th thought through the consequences of and, and to and to be able to provoke someone to think and watch that happening live, like I said with those abortion procedures, you know, to show somebody changing their mind on a topic is is wonderful viewing. Um, to see someone arrive at truth and and f and be free from from the institutions that have become so elite and oppressive in in demanding conformity to their way of thinking, um, it's it's not only entertaining, it's it's uplifting, um, and it's informing because it helps us to then rehearse those answers and say, oh yeah, well that's how he answered it when when she said something. You know that was that's how you have these conversations. So it's very empowering for everybody to to watch. Uh, sometimes when you do that in uh, Melbourne, if uh, a leftist is losing a, an argument, then <laughs> it's possible they'll resort to violence. Well, maybe you need a couple of uh, minders um, on each side. I, I don't think I could. Uh, <laughs> I think the the bruising would become the coverage for uh, the next day. I don't, don't know that that's exactly how we want to get ratings, um, but it becomes newsworthy in itself. Yeah, and it's also important us, uh, for us to, you know, not uh, uh, to, uh, to use the, the less language, stay in our safe spaces, you know, get out there, you know, provoke right. debates and uh, most of all put our own ideas to the test because that's how uh, you basically, you know, grow, you know, as a person and as an mm. activist. That's right. Um, and, you know, we, we accuse the left, and it's true, of living in echo chambers. Um, that's all their universities and, um, you know, clubs are. Um, however, it's important for us to not be guilty of, of that same thing and, and to go out there and expose our arguments to, to the tests of a robust um, conversation and dialogue and, and hopefully there are a few that we can find who um, can actually talk instead of just bash. And obviously 2018 has, has just started and uh, the, the political year well, it seems to be consumed by all of these uh, of uh, we, we had a major sex scandal and then we've had all these other uh, sex scandals alleged, which is, has been uh, quite demoralising in terms of um, news on the uh, conservative front. There's been the, the shake-up at the uh, Christian lobby with Lyle Shelton leaving and going to join Australian Conservatives and obviously the, the, yep. the new director. So uh, what's your assessment on how the political year has unfolded? Uh, well, you know, speaking, I can't believe these sex scandals are, are news. Like, what is it? It's Woman's Day. It's just gossip. Like, are we in a knitting circle, a hair salon, or are we in politics? Like, isn't there something substantive that we can talk about? Last year, surely the overwhelming message that we were meant to swallow was that love is love. A blanket, um, open check for any kind of sexual activity whatsoever if love is the motivator. Well, if that's the case, who does it matter a minister sleeping with? Aren't women got agency? Aren't they able to decide for themselves, like any other grown-up, who they sleep with? You know, this, this ridiculous notion that love is love unless you're a conservative is just stupid. It's honestly very, very disappointing um, debate. Obviously, I wish Barnaby hadn't, um, you know, mucked up. Obviously, we wish people would do the right thing for themselves, for their partners, for their children. Um, but, you know, if we weren't throwing Christian values out the window, we wouldn't need to create all these other extra rules. It's extraordinary. Look, there's 10 simple rules. If you can follow the Ten Commandments, I guarantee you don't need to have a ministerial code. It's, it's just ridiculous. Like, if you, if you stop throwing out... In fact, there's two rules that we can all live by and we won't need a ministerial code. Love God above everything else. Love your neighbour as yourself. 
if you do those two things and honor those two values in your life, you don't need all these other ministerial codes of conduct. You, you're just going to do the right thing by everybody else and by objective truth and morality and ethics first instead of living for yourself. So that's my first comment on that. You know, we've, we've got society upside down and it's just ridiculous at the beginning of 2018 that we've, you know, enshrined in law that love is love and now we're worried about who people are loving. Well, I just stay out of it and let's get on with the things that that really, really matter. Um, as to the Australian Christian Lobby, I think it's incredibly exciting. Lyle Shelton did a fantastic job. He copped so much heat. There is nobody who was more persecuted and vilified than him in all of Australia in, in the last five years, um, let alone on the conservative side. Um, absolutely. But, you know, Martin Isles... Um, He's a lawyer, he's incredibly articulate, he's got a face for camera, he's intelligent, he's softly spoken but still got a spine and got some convictions. I think he's a great standard bearer um, for you know the Christian values that Australia was built on going forward hopefully for the next five or ten years. He's, he's in the generation of people that we want to influence the most. You know, the, the people in their 40s plus are somewhat made up about about where they sit on the political spectrum. But those people coming through high school and university at the moment are looking for people like them, people that they like. And, you know, unfortunately, we are a society that's being trained to look at aesthetics and feelings. And not only does Mark Niles tick all of the substantive boxes, um, you know, principles, ethics, morality, education, intelligence, articulation, um, compassion, but he also ticks some of those shallow things that people are looking for since the personality Olympics of Kevin 07. So I think 2018 is looking up for, for the uh, right of centre um, political cases in, in Australia. Yes, oh, well, it's still early in the year, and as we've uh, seen already, it's uh, already proving to be quite uh, turbulent. We may have a federal election uh, later in the year, so there's uh, certainly a lot to watch and certainly a lot to uh, uh, fight for. So um, thanks, uh, Dave, for, for coming on the show today, and uh, before we go, I'll let you uh, uh, plug. Uh, you've got, you're, you're in the process of preparing the, the conference videos, which you'll be uh, putting up for sale. Yeah, they're up for sale already on the Summit website, which is churchandstate.com.au, where you can see the program and the speakers and, and find out exactly what's going to be in those videos. At least 90% of people said they got more than they expected, and they were privileged to see so many high-caliber speakers in, in one spot, in, in one summit. Um, you can get those videos now for half the, half the cost of attending on the day uh, from the Summit website, which is Church and State. .com.au uh, And I'd advise all of our uh, viewers and listeners to check those out and congratulations once again on the summit and um, yeah, we'll Thanks definitely so much, uh, be in touch and uh, probably uh, chat again on my show or your show again in the future. Yeah, actually I was thinking about that, that we need to, I need to interview you and uh, make sure all of the Pello Talk um, audience um, knows about the Unshackled and the great work uh, you and Emilio and the rest of the gang are doing over there. So we'll do that soon. Yep. Uh, look, look forward to that. Awesome. All right, everybody. That's the show for today. Our Unshackled Editors meeting last weekend in Melbourne was very productive. It was great to meet everyone in person and discuss our plans for 2018, where we plan to increase our output even further. Uh, just this week, we have already debuted a brand new show, Culture Clash, with Logan Spaulding, who you'll remember was a guest on this show following our Australia Day coverage. We also have organised at the last minute a Tasmanian Election Night live stream on our Facebook page, which will start at 6pm when the polls close, so please join us for our take on the results. Thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.